Welcome to Biblical Foundations for Africa, an in-depth look at the Bible as we learn how to discover God for ourselves as Christians in Africa. Join the Biblical Foundations team as they lead you through this exciting journey through the Bible. Let's get started. Karibu, and welcome once again to Biblical Foundations for Africa. That's a greeting, by the way, from Kenya. You know, we exist to encourage every single African Christian to read, to believe, and to understand the Bible for themselves, and then to go out into every single sphere of our society and make Jesus Christ glorious. My name is Norma, and thanks for joining me once again as we walk this journey together. So today we're going to start a series called, Who Are You, God? We live in a world where there are so many claims from different people, different religions, and different cultures about who God is and what he's like. So in this series of devotionals, we're going to investigate what the God of the Bible has revealed about himself through his word. So as we ask, who are you, God? The first topic we'll look at is God, the creator. Let's take our Bibles and open them to Genesis chapter 1. We're not going to be able to read the whole chapter, but we're going to read verses 1 to 5 and then the last verses of the chapter, verses 26 to 31. I encourage you to read the whole chapter in your own time. I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version, but if you've got a different version, just go ahead and read out loud in your version. Let's read. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. And darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. Let's skip to verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish over the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. You know, someone once asked this very interesting but serious question. They said, does God make man or does man make God? In other words, they were questioning whether there really is a God out there or whether the concept of God is a figment of our own human imagination. Well, the very first thing that the God of the Bible reveals about himself in the very first book of the Bible called Genesis, which means book of beginnings, and which is also sometimes called the seed book of the Bible, is that he is the creator of all things. You know, Satan has tried very hard to attack the seed book of the Bible because if you can destroy the foundations of something, then the structure above it cannot withstand. So one of the big attacks that Satan has launched against the seed book of the Bible is the theory of evolution, which competes directly against the truth of what we're told in the Bible about creation. The theory of evolution claims that everything that we see came out of nothing. It claims that all the beauty and order we observe came out of chaos. It says that the incredible complexity of the creation came out of a single cell and that everything on this earth, including you and me, are just one big cosmic accident. Well, the laws of logic should tell us that where there is a design, there must be a designer. We know that beautiful jewelry, cars, and houses do not just happen by themselves. Therefore, why do we think that such a beautiful, complex universe just happened by itself? These things are self-evident, even to children. To believe anything else is actually foolishness. 
That's why the Bible says in Psalm 14 verse 1 that the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. The Bible starts with the presupposition that there is a God, a God who has always existed and who will always exist. It doesn't try to explain him. It doesn't explain how he got to be there or what made him the way that he is. It just takes his existence as a given fact. So let's look at three implications for us of the fact that God is the originator and the creator of all things. Now, the first implication of the fact that God is the creator is that he therefore owns everything. John chapter 1 verse 3 explains that there is nothing which exists which he did not make. So everything that exists owes its origin to God. Not only does everything owe its origin to God, but Colossians 1 verse 17 tells us that everything continues to exist because he is holding it all together by his power and his might. The sun that rises daily, the seasons that occur predictably, the beauty that surrounds us, the food that we eat and the air that we breathe, we owe it all to him. Scientists have actually always wondered what is the mysterious reason why atoms don't fly apart and why does everything not just disintegrate? And they've been looking for this reason for centuries. But Colossians 1 verse 17 tells us that the reason that the universe doesn't implode on itself is because he existed before anything else and he holds it all together. Therefore, if God owns everything, we owe our being and our continued existence to him. Therefore, we should worship him with gratitude and honor. The second implication of the fact that God is the creator is that he has a creator's right to do whatever he wants with what he has created. Each man or woman who has ever created anything, whether it's a song or a book or a machine or a house, knows the purpose for which he or she created that thing. And he or she has every right to use it in whatever way he or she pleases. In Isaiah 43 verse 7, God says that he has created us for his glory and he has called us by his name. We belong to him. Therefore, if we belong to him, we ought to submit our lives to him for his purposes and his glory. The third and final implication of the fact that God is the creator is that every single man and woman is ultimately accountable to him. You know, sinful men and women hate the thought that they might be accountable to God for the way in which they live their lives and the things that they do. So they try to annihilate God from their consciousness. You know, a particular philosopher called Friedrich Nietzsche even went to the extent of proclaiming God is dead. But no amount of hostility from created man can get rid of the ultimate reality of the uncreated eternal God to whom we must all give an account one day for our lives. Like it or not, we are accountable to him. So here are three questions for you to meditate on today. Number one, do you believe the Bible when it says that God is the creator or have you bought into the lie of evolution? Number two, do you acknowledge that everything you have comes from him and do you give him the glory for it? Number three, are you living your life in such a way that you are accountable to God for your lifestyle, your finances, your body and your relationships? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us your written word in the form of the Bible. Thank you for revealing to us that you are the creator who created all things. Lord, where there's resistance in any area of my life toward the glory, the worship and the accountability I owe to you, I pray that you would help me by your Holy Spirit to submit to you. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Don't forget to read Genesis chapter 1 and 2 in their entirety in order to learn more about God, the creator. We're right here every weekday with a new installment of Biblical Foundations for Africa. Feel free to follow us on any of our social media channels. Be blessed and remember as you go out today to make Jesus glorious. Thank you for joining us today on our Biblical Foundations for Africa lesson. To find out more information, join us on our website www.biblicalfoundationsafrica.com.
www.thepeopleshow.com. Also, we'd love to have you as our friend on our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter. See you next time. <laughs>